bring in Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano. And Judge, we also want to, want to point out that this was also the FBI uh, leader who was overseeing the Clinton private email server investigation. Have laws been broken? Well, I don't know if laws have been broken, but certainly ethics have been broken. Certainly, you know, there are two aspects of justice. There's real justice and there's the appearance of justice. It certainly does not appear just. It does not appear fair. It does not appear right that the person supervising, managing the FBI agents in the field investigating Mrs. Clinton is married to somebody who received an enormous benefit from a Clinton ally, a notorious Clinton ally. Uh, there, there's no way around identifying Governor McAuliffe as the closest friends the Clintons had. When they left the White House, as she said, dirt poor, who gave them the mortgage for their house? They, they didn't even have creditworthiness to borrow money. They got the mortgage for their mansion in Chappaqua from Terry McAuliffe. That's the kind of relationship they have. Mr. McCabe should have known, Deputy Director McCabe should have known this was not the place for him. He's married to a prominent physician who's running for the state senate in Virginia. She received $690,000 dollars from the governor of Virginia who's the best friend of the person McCabe's team is investigating. Tell me that that's not wrong. Is it a crime? No, it is not a crime. But it diminishes yet again the once impeccable reputation that the FBI enjoyed as the premier, most ethical, most upright law enforcement entity in the land, in the world. How many more conflicts are we going to see? Right, and does anything change at the FBI because of this? You know, I don't know. I, I am sure that if they were here today, if uh, Director McCabe and Director Comey were here today, McCabe would say Comey decided, and Comey would say Comey decided all McCabe did was uh, move pieces on a chessboard. But l let me tell you the, the back story here. How do we know about this? The back story is there are a hundred plus FBI agents, hard working men and women who worked on this case, who almost to a person are convinced that the fix was in from the beginning, that there should have been a grand jury sitting, that they should have been presenting evidence on a regular, consistent, systematic basis to the grand jury, and that there's more than enough evidence to indict and to convict Mrs. Clinton. When well, they were big-footed, that is, when their bosses said, we are not going to present to a grand jury no matter what you folks come up with, they reacted in a way that has caused these leaks to come out, which undermines the Judge, FBI's decision. It, not only is it Mrs. Clinton, but it's also Cheryl Mills, as well as other people that are within the entire campaign, so they got a has to, but the problem with the FBI as well is that the unprecedented amount of concessions that they gave, gave that they won't ever do again and they never did before, whether it had to do with immunity or destroying the actual hard drives and computers after they searched them. I mean, it, it, this isn't just about Hillary Clinton. This is about the concessions but, they gave to everybody yes, else. Good and point. What they so, did. It, it, I'll just use you as an example. This is hardly the facts, but <laughs> the FBI wants your laptop. They're going to not. They're not going to say, Kevin. Please give us your laptop. They're going to knock at the door at 5 in the morning with a warrant from a judge and take the laptop. In Cheryl Mills' case, we will take your laptop. We will promise not to prosecute you on the basis of anything that's in here. And we will, as a courtesy to you, destroy the laptop so the members of Congress who want to see what's in here can never get it. Yeah, and also Again, she's a, she's is a, that a crime? No, but is it fair? Is it right? Is it ethical? Well, she was also course. allowed to sit so in wrong. on Hillary Clinton's uh, deposition with them. She was allowed to sit in that meeting while she was also under investigation. Yeah. Under, and, under the facade that she was uh, one of the lawyer. lawyer's lawyers. Yeah. Yes. And, Judge, so what happens with, you know, we just had, you know, Ed Rollins on here and he said it's not looking good for the Trump campaign. That's been the talk all over the weekend. So what if she does become president, right? This feeling uh, in, from the American people that justice has been undermined, that this is all corrupt, that doesn't go away after November 8th. So what does that say about undermining she, the, our democracy and the social well, contract? Who's going to change it, though? She yeah. will be like President Nixon, uh, inaugurated on January 20th, 1973, with Watergate about to collapse around him. This will follow her yeah. into, uh, unless President Obama pardons her while he's still in office. Whether she's a little, let's say she wins, and he decides to pardon her, so she doesn't have to pardon herself. 
Oh, wow. Which she has the oh, authority to do, I'm sorry right? to tell you. I think this will follow her into office and torment her, and where and how it ends, I don't know. And Does Jim and Comey stay? Does Jim Comey stay as the director of the FBI? Well, that's a big question, and I think you're right to no. raise this, because at this point, there's enough controversy around him that... Well, we'll see. But yes. th let's talk about Morocco for a second. Right. Another outrageous situation. Clinton under fire this morning for emails that suggest a potential $12 million pay to play arrangement with the King of Morocco. One of the emails has Huma Abedin herself saying, quote, This was uh, Hillary's idea. She created this mess. She knows it, regardless of whether or not she attended the event. Is this clear evidence of pay for play? It doesn't matter if she attended the event or not. She was trying to get the King of Morocco to put $12 million into the Clinton family. Foundation. Some of which went to host this very, very lavish five day event at a five star hotel in Morocco. Morocco is a place that is antithetical to the way Hillary Clinton says she views human rights. It is a place that crushes the human rights of women and gays and anybody that doesn't behave the way the king thinks you should behave. But she was willing but to. But they had the 12 money. million. They had 12 million. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, I don't think this shocks anymore. I don't think this moves the needle of the voters anymore. There's been so much scandal about uh, Mrs. Clinton, particularly about emails, especially yeah. about the foundation. It just does. It just goes in one ear and out the well, other of the average voter. And they handle it very well. Here's her campaign manager, Robbie Mook, on yesterday's Fox News Sunday. Listen to this. Well, I didn't want anything on her schedule uh, that was going to distract from the campaign. And again, the Clinton Global Initiative had this meeting scheduled in Morocco. Yeah, but it was the big money from a foreign person to the foundation at the time she's running for president. I, it, this was, as you can see in those emails, this was a scheduling matter. And we didn't want her going overseas. I didn't want her going overseas uh, before the campaign was kicking off. So it's a complete, it's a complete, let's just blow off, blow off right. of it's the a, actual contents of the issue, which is $12 like, million dollars to like, the Clinton Foundation. She's calling the scheduling right. it's like issue. Chris, it's like Chris Wallace saying to her, can you explain what your, um, your campaign manager was saying that we've read in, the, in WikiLeaks? And she said, uh, well, the Russians shouldn't have hacked us. Right. And it changes the subject. Yeah, she says, yeah. we've run this foundation to the highest ethical standards you could imagine. Oh, she sat around in 2009 and testified to Congress that she would have have no conflicts so of interest. Twelve million dollars. So the foundation has violated so many laws, but with the Obama administration controlling the federal apparatus, they're not going to prosecute, and the public is sick and tired of this. I'll tell you who could Wait, prosecute we're... the foundation. They operate in many states in the union. You have many state attorneys general whose political views are the opposite of this Justice Department, no. who could very well prosecute the foundation for the failure to register, the failure to get permission the, uh, to, to seek funds, the failure to dispose of funds as the law requires. But there is no payback by the Clintons for any of the shenanigans, for any of the seedy, dirty business, nothing. She potentially is going to be elected the President of the United States. How does it not get worse in terms of the abuse of power and the abuse of the American people? Well, that's why I said when, once, she enters the, once she enters the White House, these problems enter with her. Her husband's behavior enters with her. The foundation uh, enters with her. These are essentially unsolved, serious legal claims against her. Unless she's pardoned, these claims will fester and we will probably continue to find more and more. How do we find out more and more? by those unhappy FBI agents mm -hmm. who know the truth and who are furious that they couldn't present the truth to a grand jury. Well, yeah.